Good morning and welcome to Power Mind International. We thank God for you and we thank God for life. Um, today we're going to worship again and then we're also going to hear the word. I uh, encourage you to uh, stay put or stay tuned and write something down so that you would benefit from it. And the Lord bless you as you worship with us today in the Power Man International. Okay, let's pray. Mecca tu sopra di ala, eco pratasi tu pra, ji cala brada disco pradia, meke te cupra catiso to braia, i jaga zica para caleto malana, e que te que te para catu sopra dia, i to coprada, e zubra dica pra catanda, i yakata capucala. Eza kala braka te ibo plus kala braga ila kala braga ila kala braga e pua pua e butu kafala tiso protosu 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 isha kata ala tapero kotoso zeke zeke pereke zeke reke zeke reke e butu kupra gada i krata kuta kuta kariaga. Isha kaza padu zokata liba riko to braga e koko supra kata mesu kopradia. Jesus, Vasu, Kopra, Gazik, Elet, Kopra, Kalito, Labrati. Ish Kada, Murak, Alekoto, Ikrata, Ikrata, Ikrata. Eganda, Mawaka. Lekete, Kopokoto, Suto, Kopradia. Izoko, Paka, Tiko, Tala, Paka, Eko, Prakatala. Eko, Tuka, Prakateso, Pratova. Jegene, Mego, Raka, Lakapal, Kaliko, Parakaleta. Eko toko soto lo brakita kara katanda. Ija kata kapara le tora lo buru lo suru. Ija gaba kata la rua kalepo kara satenda. We worship you, we honor you, we adore you. Ma rua ne me rua ke. E vugo ba rua seten me rua kashi kara bosata. There is no one else like you, Jehovah. Manja nuso pagende ma rua kende ba rua kadenda. E koto suto kapra diaba, me su koto soto, e braka ti so praga, la praga, la praga, la praga, la praga. Me de 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 like you, and no one else can touch my heart like you do, and I have searched you all There is no love 
directly from you. No one can touch us like you do. Now have your way and speak and minister deep and direct to your people. Have we? In Jesus' awesome name we have prayed. 
Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to hear, I would, I would say, just a very brief message today titled Deep Calls to the Deep. Deep Calls to the Deep. Join me as I go to the Word of God in Psalm 42. Please join me if you have your Bible. And I'm going to be reading from verse 6 to 7. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizor. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Join me again as I go straight on to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse 26. Actually, let's read it from 24 to 26 so we get a context. Um, it says, most assuredly, Jesus says here, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. That's Jesus, which is our focus. If anyone serves me, Jesus is saying, let him follow me. In other words, just permit me to, you know, um, expand it a little bit. To follow Jesus means serving him. In other words, to Jesus, the one who is actually serving him, is the one who is following him. Because following him and serving him are two things but one. That is to say, you cannot separate following Jesus Christ from serving Jesus Christ. And you can also not separate serving Jesus Christ from following Jesus Christ. Ideally, to serve him fully means to follow him unconditionally. Let me continue. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, where I am, there my servant will be also. Let's take a, a brief moment here so that that would sink a little bit in. And where I am, there my servant will be also. And where is Jesus now? Jesus is in heaven. The one inside you and I is the Holy Ghost. And it says, where I am. This is not metaphorical. This is realistic, factual, and faithful. 
where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, my if anyone serves me, him my father will honor. I want to talk to us today very briefly and very directly on that subject, deep calls unto deep. What does that mean? What, 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 what is the implication? It is a very popular scripture. What is deep? And what is the second deep than the first that the first deep is calling? Deep calling is God calling. You remember Jesus says that the Father seeketh him or seeketh those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus is the deep that is calling people to go into deep relationship with him. Jesus Christ is the deep that wants to take people deep into the things of God. Jesus Christ is the deep that wants to take what people call ordinary Christian. I don't believe any Christian is ordinary. To take an ordinary Christian to show him or her who he is, who Jesus is, where Jesus lives, how Jesus operates, how he does his thing. Because Jesus has no secret. Jesus is simple. Jesus is not like you and I, you know, we are very complex. You know, human beings are very complicated and complex. But not so with Jesus. He is simple, transparent. That's why he says he's the truth. He says, what I tell you in the secret, come up, you said, stand on top of the roof and shout it. Meaning, he has no secret. He wants, he wants to, the things we call secret are the things he has not shown you. And the reason why he hasn't shown you is because, or shown me, is because we haven't gone deep with him. So he wants to take all of us. He wants to, sh he told his disciples, says, where I'm going, you know. And one of them spoke and said, Lord, how do we know? So today, I will just share a simple experience that I had with Jesus Christ as the way he told me to teach you today to, you know, and he, and he told me specifically, he said, don't write anything out. Before we, before we came online, my wife said, you don't have a note. I said, yeah. He told me specifically, he said, don't write anything down. He says, I will remind you everything I am telling you now. Sometime last week, the Lord gave me a message for today. And he says, the message is deep cause unto deep. And during the, during the week, just, you know, you say a couple of days ago, you know, during the week I was, you know, studying and meditating and getting ready for the message. So yesterday, 
I decided to sit down with my notebooks and with my Bible, you know, to give structure and content to the message of today, to the message he gave to me. But when I sat down, nothing was coming. I wasn't, there wasn't, I, I wasn't getting that inspiration like I usually do. So I sat down for a long time, and then I decided to seek his face. I just decided to, you know, let go the message, everything. I just put it there, and I decided to uh, seek his face. When I say seek his face, I mean to sit down quietly. And yesterday I had to have, you know, a music by the side, just playing soft music, instrumental. And then I started to gaze on his face. Sincerely and truly, it wasn't, yes, yesterday wasn't my first time. It's something I do always. So it's not oh, something that I just happened to have done yesterday. It has become my lifestyle. So I sat down there, and then I was gazing on the face of Jesus. But it took me a little bit of time for my inside, my mind, to be very quiet. But after a while, about maybe one hour after, it became quiet. Everything inside me became very quiet. And then I kept gazing on the face of Jesus Christ. And you may ask me, how do you gaze on the face of Jesus? By faith. By faith. For the just shall live by faith. And the, let the man that cometh unto him believe that he is. And he is the one that will reward everyone that do diligently seek him. So I sat down there by faith, very quietly, my mind quiet, my inside quiet, my outside quiet. The only sound to be heard around me was the quiet music playing. And then all of a sudden, the Lord beckoned on me. And he said, come up here. Again, that was not the first time he was coming or we were fellowshipping together. But yesterday was very um, important. I mean, yesterday was the one he has allowed me to share to you or share with you. And then he said, and then... And then I went with him. My physical body was in the room. Then my spirit went with him to heaven. And then as we proceeded, as we proceeded, I began to, you know, worship him and honor him and worship him. And then all of a sudden I could feel that, you know, he, his heart melted with emotions. And that's the number one lesson that he wants me to share with everyone who may listen. That the heart of Jesus is not hard. The heart of human beings may be hard, but the heart of Jesus is not hard. And that's why he says in his word that he will be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. So, so right there, and I, and I, uh, I waited, you know, while he was, you know, feeling that emotions, and then we continued to walk. As we, as we walked along, 
he said something. I said, Lord, I need to write this thing down. I said, but I need you to be here. If I open my eyes, I, I need you to be here. I said, no problem, just. So I opened up my eyes and I wrote something down that he said to me, so I wrote it. And I closed my eyes again and I was caught up immediately with him. And that's lesson number two. That the Lord is patient. And the Lord is very faithful. Okay? The Lord is patient with you. And the Lord is faithful. Those two are not the same, but they are the same. What God has said to you, any promise, both the one you are able to glean from the word and the one he has directly, personally, by his spirit, ministered to your spirit, will certainly come to pass. All he needs from you is believe him. Trust that what he has said to you will certainly come to pass. What he has promised your family, your church, your nation, your, the, the church of God worldwide must certainly come to pass. That's lesson number two. So I was caught back up and then we continued our journey. And then he got to a point, he said, wait here. So I waited. So as I was waiting, I said, I said in my heart, you know, while I wait for him, I might as well start to worship him. So I started worshiping him, worshiping and worshiping and worshiping and worshiping and worshiping. Until the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, he said, he's ready now. That's lesson number three. While you are waiting for God, while you are waiting for what he has told you to come to pass, for what he has called you to begin to manifest, uh, for, for what you, know, you are expecting from him, for, 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 for what you, are, you have asked or prayed for, while you are waiting, develop a lifestyle of worship. Worship him when you can feel him. Worship him when, when you, you can't feel his presence. Worship him when things are going the way you expected or the way you expected. Worship him also when things are not going your way. Worship him when it looks as if you are stagnated in life. Worship him when it looks as if you are frustrated in life, worship him when you are at speed in life, when you are accomplishing things, you know, in quick successions, develop a lifestyle of worship. The Lord seeks those who worship him. Then he came, and then we continued our journey. As we continued our journey, all of a sudden we started descending. We started descending, descending, descending. I said, I said to him, Lord, why are we descending? Why are we, why are we descending, you know, down? And then he said to me, he said, there are depths in heaven. He said, there is death in heaven. And then we got to a point when we finally like settled, you know, we were descending into hell, mind you, please. We are descending, we are still in heaven. We got to a point where we descended and then we, you know, we stopped descending. And then all of a sudden he sat down. And then I also sat down. But he wasn't talking to me, he had something in his hand that he was, you know, like a leaf. Like a um, like a leaf somebody plucked out from a plant, right? You know the uh, soft side. So he had it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, before he just made it. Before 
we decided before we started descending, as we proceeded, you know, we began to play together. I don't know if you had, if you had held, uh, you know, one of, you know, when my kids were, you know, growing up, I could, I could carry them. Then we can, you know, swing along like that. Okay, so, so we started, you know, playing. Then he, he grabbed my two hands and was, you know, swinging like this. You know, I. I don't know whether any of you had done that with your niece or your nephew or your child, you know. So we're swinging like that. I said, Lord, so, so, so somebody can play with you like this. So you can play with. Then he began to remind me scriptures. Number one scripture was when he told his disciples, let the small children Come to me. Do not stop them from coming to me. For the kingdom of God is for people like them. So, so the Lord said to me, and reminded me about one of our sisters in the church here, you know, who traveled to me or who traveled with me to, to Africa. He said, he said to me, he said, did you see that lady? I said, yes. And then he said, did you see how, how joyful that lady is? I said, Lord, I see, I see that. It amazes me. He said, did you see how she dances like a little child? I said, yes. I, she said, that's how I expect my children to be and to relate to me. She said, Sorry, he said she has a heart like a child and rejoices in my presence like a child and celebrates like a child. And the Lord said to me, do you see the type of testimonies she has? I said, yes. And the Lord said, do you see the type of miracles that come to her? I said, yes, Lord. I, I had, she has she had such with me. And the Lord said to me, my children, some of my children are very tight. They are, they live, a, they, they live a tight life. And it says, because they are tight, things get tight for them. And the Lord reminded me again of the scripture, I, I believe in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, it says, um, Whatever you bind here on earth is also bound in heaven, and whatever you lose here on earth is loosed also in heaven. And the Lord said, a lot of my children, because they are so tight with life, they are so tight, have inadvertently bound themselves. You know, there's a place of binding the devil, but this one, People that are tight seem to have bound themselves. You know, they say this is this is this is the much, this is this is how far I can go with Jesus and not anymore. This is I can't I can't be free with Jesus. I can't go beyond this knowledge of Jesus. I can't go beyond this depth or, or level or intensity of relationship with Jesus. So, without their knowing, they limit both their experiences with God and they limit themselves. So that's one lesson, I guess, lesson number four, that the Lord wants me to share with you. Losing yourself. Become like a child unto God. We cannot know more than Jesus. Jesus says, allow the children to come to me for the kingdom of God is for people that come to me like children. Uh, people that relate with me like children. People that run after me like children. For example, if a man relates with Jesus 
like one who knows everything. That man indeed has limited himself and shut himself out from receiving deep revelations from Jesus. Because in his heart, he knows all the scriptures. He has seen everything. Even our patriarch Moses said to God, I want to see your glory. And himself a man that walked with power, a man that spoke to God face to face, a man that God used to do diverse kinds of miracles. And the Bible says of Moses that the children of Israel knew the acts of God, but Moses knew his ways. Yes, yet Moses was so humble that he said, Lord, show me your glory. In our own time, in recent time, Apostle Paul, a man that wrote, I guess, to fourth or to third of, of the New Testament, had encounters, lived literally in the spiritual realm, did many miracles, God used him, also said, I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. So this attitude must be in us. We have to go and long after Jesus. To know, we have to, we have to pretend, not pretend it, we have to know that we don't know anything and go after him so he can teach us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then it was after this wonderful, uh, beautiful event that we now began to descend. And then we descended and descended until we got to a point where we stopped and then he sat down. And then I sat down with him. And then he was not talking. And I said to him, I said, Lord, I want to hear, I want to hear your voice speak to me. And then he said to me, and this is lesson number five. He said to me, sometimes two friends can sit down in a room and neither of them will be speaking. They will not be talking. It does not mean that there is no relationship. To, I don't know whether you have experienced it. You have your friend over, you have your friends over. Everybody was just, everybody's just there, nobody's talking, you know, especially in this time of, uh, you, know, I, um, you know, high tech. It does not mean that there is enmity or that there is no communication or that there is no fellowship. Sometimes you come to God's presence and you, sp you spend hours upon hours, tons of hours, and you haven't heard any word from God, and you have not felt any goose pimples around you. You know, you, your body is not tingling, you are not shaking, you know, you haven't, you haven't received any revelation from the Word of God. Stay there. It does not mean that Jesus is not there. For example, when God called Moses to the mountain, Moses was there for about seven, uh, six days. It was on the seventh day that God said to Moses, come up here. But all along, God was there and Moses was there and the glory of God was all over the mountain. But God only spoke on the seventh day. And then, Moses stayed there 30, for 40 days, okay? For 39 days, God didn't say nothing. And God was there. Moses knew God was there, and Moses was still there. It was on the 40th day that God now wrote the law on the tablets 
and gave to Moses to come down. So you might go for a retreat and you go with all intensity and you go with all zeal that you are going to hear from God and that things are going to... You may spend all that 30 days, 40 days with the Lord and not hear anything. It does not mean that he wasn't there. It does not mean that he that that, that he neglected you. No. So that 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 is an amazing lesson that he taught me yesterday. God may decide to speak to you every day for 365 days. He may decide not to speak to you for 365 days. The Bible, say, the Bible says about God, it says, a day to God is like a thousand days, a thousand years, right? And a thousand years to God is like a day. So what God desires most than even speaking to you and I is our intimacy with him, our relationship with him. Many times my wife and I will be in the same, in the same room, we are not talking. She's doing her thing, I'm doing my thing. We are not angry, we are not fighting, we are not quarreling, but we are still intimate. So, you remember in our couple of series ago, we discovered that Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, and we are the bride. So in the same manner, the bridegroom may decide not to talk to the bride, not to talk to the bride. It's not, there's nothing, there's, not, there's, no, uh, there's no quarrel, it's just, there is intimacy. Sometimes intimacy grows stronger in silence. Okay? And then he now began to talk to me. I said, I said, Lord, but why are we sitting here? That's lesson number six. I said, Lord, why are we seated here? And then he said to me, in the natural. You cannot put those who are in grade four in the same class with the people who are in grade five. Okay? Also in the natural. You can't put those who are in university one with those who are about to write their final exams to graduate. Okay? Also in heaven. You can't put Father Abraham with, at the same place where you put a child of God who just gave his life to Christ you know, recently and something happened, he goes back to heaven. They can't be at the same place. It's not that God loves Abraham more than he loves the child. No, it's just that in heaven there are crowns. If you read Revelation, you understand that there are crowns, there are stars of glory. Okay? So when we sat there, you know, he began to tell me, he said, So, for those who are hungry for me, for those who desire to go deep with me, I sit down with them. Okay? See, I see. That's, that's, that's where we're going to close today. It says, the deep calls unto the deep. It, because <laughs> you can't... The people that drive through Tim Hortons, uh, drive through um, McDonald's, get a special kind, get one kind of treatment than the people that sit down and eat inside Tim Hortons or McDonald's, right? The other type we call drive through and the other type we call sitting and dining, right? Now, there are drive throughs Christians, okay? God loves them. Jesus loves them. Jesus loves them, loves everyone. But there are 
there are believers that are deeply that are going deep in their relationship with Jesus. In other words, they are not satisfied with with, you know, elementary, ordinary, average relationship with him. Rather, they desire intimacy with him. They, they, they prefer to, they, they are hungry and they are thirsty for more of him. Thank you, Lord. Let me put it this way. For, for the deep that Jesus is coming, when the other believers are looking at their time, oh, I've been with the Lord for 30 minutes, you know, I think it's enough. The deep loses Touch of time. I don't know if that makes a difference to you. For those who are intimate, who, who, who are going deep with God, who are intimate with Him, they clear their schedules. So they will have enough time with Jesus. Because they know they know that it's, it's, it is not something 30 minutes will cut or three hours will cut. They wish that they have the whole day to spend with Jesus. That is the kind of mindset they have. They know they have to go to work. They know they have to do other things. They don't know. They, they are busy people like you and I. But their mindset is I need to clear my table so I will have enough time with Jesus. You see this? So, this type of people are the deep. And God wants all his believers to be deep. Because some of the things I'm telling you now, I never knew. The only reason why I knew them was because he told me or he revealed to me. And, and in fact, it is, it is the best life you and I can live. It's a life where you find, thank you, Holy One. Blessed be your name. It's a life where you are free. You remember Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, if you read 28, verse 29, he says, Come unto me, all you that weary and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. That is rest number one. And in fact, every believer has received that rest. Okay? All believers. Has, as long as you are born again and you know Jesus Christ, you have, you have that rest. That rest level number one. Then you read verse 29. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. And that rest is for those who want to go deep with Jesus, who are ready for, for an undistracted, undeterred, undisturbed in, intimacy with him. That's when you begin to experience what the, the writer of Hebrews said about entering into your rest. That is where God wants you and I to be. Heaven is real. Jesus is also real. And he says where he is, where he is, 
there shall my disciples also be. Where? In heaven. When? Always. That is the message that he gave to me, and I have just, by his help, by his spirit, delivered it. Be hungry, be thirsty, and go after Jesus in full pursuit. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. Visit us if you are within the city of Winnipeg, and we will help you grow by the Spirit of God. If you are not born again, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I am sorry for my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God, and I believe that you came and died for me. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Come into my heart as I now confess, and be my Lord and be my Savior. If you have said that prayer, please find us, and God helping us, we will help you become a disciple of Jesus. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.